Is your TOS telling you that your RTG is experiencing jitter as it moves down the stack? Are your AGVs going into failsafe? Is the HDV all wonky on your STS, making life difficult for everyone? If these sound like problems you're facing, then wow, have you found the right video. On the other hand, if these three letter acronyms are completely mysterious to you, don't worry. We'll sort all of that out in a minute. I'm Matt Bullock, one of the technical marketing engineers here at Cisco. And today I'm out at a new container shipping terminal being built on the east coast of the United States. Ports like these face a lot of problems with network connectivity that might be a bigger scale than other industries, but really aren't all that unique. First off, there's the problems of location and infrastructure. Like many businesses, you have to deal with what the environment gives you. In this case, that means large open spaces with equipment that needs to be connected with big moving machinery and plenty of metal containers to wreak havoc with any wired or wireless connections. Running fiber to a ship to shore crane might sound like a great idea until you realize how expensive that will be and how likely those big cranes, vehicles, and containers are to damaging the fiber. Another problem that ports, along with many industries, are facing as they digitize is the need to connect lots of different devices with different smart applications. Modern terminal operating systems are accessible from handheld devices by employees across the terminal, while new autonomous guided vehicles require reliable, low latency connections to ensure safe operation within the port. They also need high definition video on all of their cranes to support optical character recognition so they can automat automatically identify and sequence loading of containers. Now when they were looking at the different options they chose the Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul Solution to solve all those requirements in a single solution. Now you might be more familiar with Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul with the name Fluid Mesh. Fluid Mesh was acquired by Cisco and has since been fully integrated into the industrial wireless portfolio, hence the name change. It operates in the 5 GHz unlicensed spectrum, so that means that Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul coexists seamlessly with traditional Wi Fi and provides a really effective backhaul option for traditional Wi Fi access points. And that's exactly what they're doing here. For the end device connectivity that users are doing with their tablets, it lets them use those tablets to, to find exactly the container they're looking for using traditional wireless APs and the wireless backhaul solution. The similarity with traditional Wi-Fi also makes deployment planning really straightforward. At locations like this, where we want to build a point-to-multipoint mesh overlay, the planning starts out much like it would for Wi-Fi. We take a map of the site with all the known network connections and required coverage areas, and then start planning the radio locations. We pick the antennas, lay out the channel assignments just like you would with Wi-Fi. Now, to make a wireless backhaul ultra-reliable, it's also necessary to handle changes in the RF environment and outages as they occur. Now, we need to reroute seamlessly around problems when they happen. To do this, Cisco Ultra-Reliable Wireless Backhaul uses a routing algorithm based on MPLS to make sure that there is always a path through the network whenever there's a failure and that the end devices using the wireless backhaul never notice any changes. Now that keeps the port running pretty smoothly no matter what happens in the RF environment. Then finally, for roaming vehicles around the port, especially autonomous vehicles, it's extremely important to be able to roam from one radio to the next with a minimum of traffic loss. In a Wi-Fi environment, it's not uncommon to see traffic loss in the tens or hundreds of milliseconds when you roam from one access point to the next. Now with Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul, roaming time can be reduced to as low as zero milliseconds. Now that's possible because the backhaul is smart enough to realize when a mobile radio is about to roam from one zone to another, causing it to make a connection to the new radio before breaking the connection with the old one. We call it make before break. Now with the MPLS overlay technology on top of it, that means that roaming and rerouting through the network can happen with no delay and no packet loss. Now that's critical to make sure that the control traffic going to those autonomous vehicles doesn't get lost or delayed in a dangerous environment. All right, that's great. But what you really want to see is how we actually put everything together here. We start out with the initial radio installation based on our RF planning. Now there are several different radio types, lots of different antenna options in this solution depending on what's needed in this environment. 
We started with a couple centralized radios with omnidirectional antennas mounted on the buildings that already had, already had wired connectivity. Like the Terminals Operations Center, great place to start. After that, we moved on to the cranes. These large ship-to-shore cranes have plenty of height and a clear line of sight back to the main buildings. So we used directional horn antennas uh, to get really good long-range signal. The radios are the same used in other locations, but in this more rugged environment, we used a shield enclosure to provide some additional physical protection. Finally, on the mobile rubber, rubber, gant, rubber tire gantry cranes, tongue twister there, uh, and automated guided vehicles, we use the same radios, but now with smaller omnidirectional antennas that provide good coverage no matter you know, where the vehicle is or, or what direction it's facing. Okay, let's take a look at how we've configured these radios. Generally, these radios will be configured before we deploy them in the field. Now, while we could configure them locally via either a CLI or a web interface, the easiest method for provisioning a whole network is with the RACER online configuration tool. Once in RACER, we can open up, open up a radio uh, in provisioning state and apply a pre-built template to that radio. Now, for this deployment, we've standardized on two different configuration templates, and here I'll just choose the one that most closely represents what this radio needs. In this case, it's a, it's a vehicle radio. Even the best template, though, can only get you so far. In this case, we have to configure the IP address. That's all we really need to configure. But we could also modify any of the other configuration parameters if we needed to. Since we took care of all of that in the template, there's nothing else to do here. So we save the configuration and then apply it to the radio. Because this radio is connected directly to RACER, configuration is pushed directly down to the radio from the cloud, making this a simple one-step process. However, if our environment was firewalled from the internet, as many of these production environments are, uh, we could still use RACER in offline configuration mode. In this case, we would just download the radio configuration file from RACER and then apply it directly to the radio. As soon as the radio reboots with the new configuration, we'll see it back online and ready for us to physically go out and install. Once we have the radios configured with RACER and physically installed, we need to make sure that we're getting the network properly aligned. Now, we're using a lot of directional horn antennas in this setup, so making sure that they're pointed to the correct location is critical. We have a couple of different tools to help us with that. First off, all of these radios on board the radio itself give us an RF meter directly on the face. We have a series of LEDs that go from red to green. Tell us how strong the signal is. Now, that's great for rough alignment, but we want the best possible signal we can get. To do that, we go to the web interface on the radio itself. From here, we could configure everything on the radio. If you notice, though, the configuration fields here are all grayed out. That's because this radio is currently connected directly to RACER. The antenna alignment tool here is really super useful for fine-tuning a radio installation. If we go here, we can see that the, uh, the other radios that we're connected to, along with the signal strength. Now, digging a little bit more down into that, we're currently seeing about minus 75 decibels per milliwatt, which is enough to get a green LED on the radio, but we want to get that even better using this GUI. Now the GUI gives us a running 30 second graph of the signal strength for this connection. If we watch this strength as we align the horn antenna, we can get a signal that's significantly better. Now the LEDs on the radio are still all green, but we can see that the actual alignment is much, much better. We've got the wireless backhaul network set up, configured, and aimed. So it's time to switch over to monitoring what we've built. With a network like this, where production and safety rely on the network, it's really important to have a solid monitoring plan. Shipping ports are like a lot of industries, where they have customized software responsible for seeing the big picture. Now, in an industry like this, it's generically called a terminal operating system, or TOS. And Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul has APIs to integrate into all of the common terminal operating systems that are out there, plus many other big picture management tools in other industries. But what if you want to keep a close eye on the wireless backhaul itself? For that, we have FM Monitor. When you log into FM Monitor, you get the Quick View dashboard. This is something that a lot of operations centers, like here, you know, leave up on the screen all the time on a terminal on the wall. So they have a quick view of the health of the network. At a glance, they can see the number of radios that are up, the ones that are down or having problems, edge devices, average uptime, and then the current performance in throughput and latency of the network. Below that, we have groups created specifically for this network. Maybe you have all of your rubber tire gantry crane radios in a group, so you can see the overall performance as they load containers on trucks. 
Now, when we want to see real-time data, FM Monitor gives us a tabular view, a table view of all the radios in the network. Here we get the status and current configuration for each radio, plus we can expand each row for more information about the wireless performance of all the backhaul links the radio is a part of. Moving over to the Data Analysis tab, this is one of the most powerful tools in FM Monitor. Here you can do troubleshooting for problems after the events actually happen. Here in this port, as an example, we had a large bulldozer while we were going through construction while we were building the port that would block one of the infrastructure radios as it moved around the site, just moving dirt. Since it's only affected the signal strength and error rate when it was in certain locations, we had to use FM monitor data analysis to look back at the performance at the times, which, at the times when it was happening, which made it clear that there was something intermittent happening between the radios. Now, what we did was we took the antenna, moved it a few feet higher, and the problem went away even when the bulldozer was, was roaming around. Sometimes you need to dig even deeper, and that's where the logging capability of FM Monitor comes into play. FM Monitor really has a staggering array of key performance indicators that can be monitored. These go deeper than just monitoring the state of the network and can include specific indicators to keep an eye on the cool technology under the hood, like fluidity for mobile radios and the MPLS overlay for guaranteeing performance in a mesh environment. All right, that's all the time we've got for now. If you have a port or a shipping terminal that you're trying to connect, hopefully this was helpful for you. However, if you're not one of the very few folks watching this building a giant port like this, I hope some of this is useful in your environment. Whether you're trying to connect autonomous vehicles in a warehouse or trains in a crowded downtown city, the Cisco Ultra Reliable Wireless Backhaul can get you connections in those hard to reach locations. Thanks for watching and have a great day.